Part two, history and politics, U.S. world, the Hegelian dialectic, intelligence. The most famous Freemason on the planet, George Washington, and look at all of the Masonic imagery around him and the occult imagery around him. Uh, this one always, uh, you saw that baphomet with that angelic being coming onto the daughter of man. A lot of times they have this symbol uh, with, or this depiction with a, a broken uh, column, and I, for some reason, I just, in my heart, just tells me like a law broken, which uh, it has been. So, sons of God, daughters of men, Genesis 6. Here is the, I was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati and principles of Jacobinism had not spread in the United States. On the contrary, no uh, one is more fully satisfied of this fact than I am. George Washington, he was pr uh, confronted and he said that he <coughs> understands that the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had infiltrated here. And I say to you, I believe he's not, not only knows it, he's part of it. So here he is, Masonic uh, uh, regalia, laying of the foundation stone of the Capitol building. Here is his Masonic apron, uh, which is held at the uh, Washington Lodge. Uh, Freemasons laying the foundation stone of the Capitol building. The prayer room in the Capitol building has the Illuminati pyramid up top. We're going to move forward. Uh, a lot of Masonic, uh, you see the single column here. Usually he'll hold a gavel like a uh, judge does. Uh, underneath the Capitol Dome is what's called the Apotheosis of Washington. It is the godhood or attaining of godhood of Washington. Washington with various virgins around him. He's doing the as above, so below sign. As above, so below. And then all your pagan gods. Uh, Athena, Neptune, I don't know who that is. There's uh, Vulcan. You can see that around this 72 pentagrams, 72 is a high occult number, and there just happens to be 72 pentagrams and 72 demon gods of the Jewish Kabbalah. Um, uh, Kabbalah, there is Jewish Kabbalah, Christian Kabbalah, all stemming back and rooting from Babylon. You can see the IHS symbol, which is a Jesuit symbol here, IHS symbol, the role of the Kabbalah in the founding of the United States, you can read about Kabbalah and the founding, happens to be 36 black, 36 white, 72 total of black and white checkers of the uh, Imagine John Lennon Memorial in New York City, you can see the uh, checkerboard adorning that, 72 Buddhas in Borobudur, as an architect we studied uh, Buddhist architecture, here are 72 Buddhas, and uh, CNN cover the story of the Mona Lisa and the, the discovery of 72 in the left eye of Mona Lisa. At the top of the Capitol Dome is Athena, which is also known as the god of, uh, goddess of freedom. <clears throat> Here's Athena. Athena is usually depicted with an owl. You see the shield and the sword in the same fashion as the shield and the sword there. Here's the owl, but uh, the freedom does not have the owl. Uh, so the owl is embedded into the uh, layout of the Capitol building. Everybody see the owl there? Two eyes, body, and legs. The owl, they love the owl because the owl is a, an animal that sees at night. It's a nocturnal, and so the owl has now come to associate wisdom, and so you see the wise owl in, in our literature and what have you. So here is the owl in that layout. The owl happens to be on an apex of an east-west pyramid in the Capitol uh, 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 city of uh, DC. So you see the owl up top there, perched up. The Lilith, which is a demon goddess. Uh, you see Lilith's owl, owls there. Here's Athena in New York City with her owl. Uh, not only Athena is a goddess of war, wisdom and war. <coughs> and then you have uh, the goddess or the god Mars at the Capitol building too uh, as well. So I just don't understand these Pastors will all go to Washington, D.C., and we're a Christian nation. You've got the obelisk there. You've got Mars. All of the pagan architecture of Rome and Greece, as well as the gods depicted there. And so here is Mars. And this is an Illuminati pendant, a Bavarian Illuminati pendant. You'll see the owl up there, along with a book. Bohemian Grove, if nobody under, uh, knows what the Bohemian Grove is, our dignitaries, George W. Bush, you see Nixon there, you see Reagan and Nixon at the Bohemian Grove. 
they do, you know, this is in Northern California, they all fly in at midsummer, which is a high, which is holiday or uh, uh, time, a midsummer, and they do a ritual in front of a 40 foot owl. This is not all stone, it's actually a, um, they've constructed this owl, and they dress up like Catholics with the priest's mitre, which is the priest of Dagon. It's a pagan, pagan hat, and they do what's called the cremation of care. They are cremating your conscience. They are destroying your conscience. Therefore, they can do wicked acts um, and not have any conscience or care over it. It's called the cremation of care. National Press Club, you see the owl and the Aladdin's lamp depicted there. And then you have the Aladdin's lamp at the base of the owl that is at Bohemian Grove as well. So you see the Masonic emblems there as well. And then you see him doing the sign of silence with the owl at the press club. And here is the, the dollar bill owl, supposedly. And I, I just, I'm not sure if it is, but I just threw it in there. Uh, Bohemian Grove, Midsummer Encampment, 1966. So the Bohemian Grove, uh, or Bohemian Club is what it's called. The owl is actually, they put this on the My Little Pony for you. Isn't that strange? They know what they're doing. They make the cartoons for you and your children. Uh, trust the Elite, here's Drake with his owl. Uh, just recently, Justin Bieber got a tattoo, which is an owl. Uh, Michael Jackson's owl. Lady Gaga's Horned Owl, uh, Harry Potter's The Tarot Card Justice Owl there. Freemasonry today, uh, you can pull this off of the website uh, and Washington, D.C., the Masonic City. They tell you plainly it is a Masonic City. Therefore, all the, Mas the emblems of Freemasonry, the symbols of Freemasonry would be embedded in that city. The pentagram may be broken at one point by not permitting the converging lines to touch. When used in black magic, the pentagram is called the sign of the cloven hoof or footprint of the devil. Manly Hall, you can see that that is exactly what it is embedded into Washington, D.C. Is a, is a broken pentagram. There it is there. Some satanic bands use the broken pentagram on their shirts. Uh, it is an entrapment type of pentagram and uh, used to ensnare. The star w with two points upward is called the goat of Mendez because the inverted star is the same shape as the goat's head. When the upright star turns and, and the upper point falls to the bottom, it signifies the fall of the morning star, Manly P. Hall. And you can see here, there is that broken pentagram. If you trace the lines that are the uh, uh, circles, um, roundabouts, here you can uh, create a pyramid. This is an actual street. This is broken at this end. This is an actual street here. And then at the top, at the apex, is the Masonic Lodge right at that point. Thirteen blocks from the White House. You can count them for yourself. Uh, the Masonic Lodge happens to be more in line with the Washington Monument than uh, the Washington Monument is in line with the White House. So the um, Washington Monument is in line more with the, with the Masonic Lodge. Uh, the pentagram is the center of the pentacle. Uh, you have Pentagon there, and Palazzo Farnese, the Jesuit uh, uh, castle, is a pentagon as well. Uh, this is a statue of Washington called, I forget what it's called, but anyway, it caused such controversy. They were going to put it next to the Capitol building. Um, uh, it would cause such controversy they relegated to the Smithsonian. Uh, look at that. It is a depiction of Washington being deified uh, as here is Zeus in the Temple of Zeus, and you see as above, so below, um, up above and below, <clears throat> and the sword as well. So you look at that Baphomet as above, so below, and then kind of interesting, Uncle Sam has the star just like Baphomet does. The Washington, George Washington Masonic National Memorial. You see the building, beautiful building architecture. Uh, there is the single pillar, Masonic pillar, with the gavel he's holding. You see the checkerboards. You see everybody here hanging out. You see all of his his apron being adorned there. He's a Mason, Freemason. Uh, his friend uh, Benjamin Franklin. He's holding the key to the mysteries and doing the Masonic uh, allegiance sign of allegiance. He's in his Masonic regalia here. I don't know whether or not this is, but but uh, you'll see another 
a prominent uh, uh, Freemason doing the same symbol. So here is um, Falcon doing the sign of allegiance. Um, this is an emblem there. Looks very similar to our uh, um, Medal of Honor. And uh, here is the Maltese Cross, Knights of Malta, which is Roman Catholic. There's the Maltese Cross, the American version. And then you have um, the um, counterfeit again, showing you that they're referenced uh, in reference to uh, the Ark of the Covenant. But uh, look at the Knights Templar. This is called the Knights Templar Room in the Washington Masonic National Memorial. So Knights Templar, and making that correlation between uh, Roman Catholicism, Knights Templar, and uh, uh, and Freemasonry. Uh, this is not again, I told you, a Christian symbol. It is a phallic symbol. It is the Order of the Knights Templar. Therefore, it's in the Knights Templar Room. And look at here, IHS, the Jesuit. Uh, acronym for supposedly the Society of Jesus and then you have the nice Templar here and then you have the iconography the man as above so below pointing down to the skull there it is Knights Templar room cross and crown York Rite Freemasonry remember both both orders culminate at the top level into the same so whatever order you take you're gonna you're gonna <clears throat> get to the same result. And here's Jesus with that Vesica Pisces sign representing the female part. So uh, Jesus coming through that. Uh, watch out for the icons and for the idols that uh, they put in front of you. Here's the beautiful building. Now this is just showing you again that even architects will, will design the building uh, with meaning. And so you see the cross I'm sorry, the um, compass and square. You see the compass is at the top. The compass is at the top, pointing toward the building, which represents the male phallus, pointing to the sky toward heaven. And then you see the square pointing toward the earth. And if you know your anatomy, that is the female earth part. So in the architecture embedded this union of male and female. I, I, that's why it says 18 and over. Uh, 14 to 17 with parent or guardian. So uh, then you have the um, uh, Masonic uh, uh, obelisk, the Egyptian obelisk at Washington's tomb. And this is Jefferson's tomb. Franklin got this, but his parents got the obelisk. Go figure. I don't know why, but anyway, Rockefeller's obelisk. Here's the most famous one, the Washington Monument. As above, so below. This is designed like a Heliopolis, a city of the sun. And so you see how pagan that is. The obelisk is an Egyptian sun symbol. It is phallic in nature, representing the male penis, a symbol of generation. You see the male part here representing the obelisk and then you see the two circles conjoining creating the vesica pisces which is this shape representing the female therefore the male and the female together on there now this didn't always they just redesigned this in like 2005 it used to be a circumpunct which also represents the sun so they transformed this into more appropriately uh, male and female symbology uh, here is the Vatican obelisk. Why in the world would a Christian church, quote Christian church, have an obelisk in the center there? It is a sundial. Uh, this direction faces east toward the sun and appropriately toward the obelisk. In addition to that, St. Peter's Square is the keyhole. You see the keyhole. In addition to the keyhole, that's the key to the mysteries. In addition to the keyhole, this entire, this is the shaft, is the key. So that becomes the handle for the key and the shaft and the key, end of the key uh, in the Vatican. Uh, then you have here obelisks all over the world. I'll go through this quickly. In addition to that, North Korea's obelisk here. So that's why I believe that whether or not we think they're part of the world or not, Syria was a you know in the hands of Iran. Just so happens Syria is being dealt with now. Just so happens there's a prophecy 
uh, about Damascus being destroyed and literally in uh, a heap, a ruinous heap. If you've seen pictures of Damascus and cities in uh, Syria now, they're literally becoming ruinous heaps. I mean, literally happening today. So here's North Korea. Here's the obelisk on Kapiolani at the Buddhist uh, temple. And here is a Hindu, uh, Ida Pingala, the male found. All religions, east, west, false religions, satanic religions, have the same uh, um, symbolism. Here is the Israeli uh, Supreme Court building. Look at this. Here's the Illuminati pyramid with the eye at the top or the window. Here is Dorothy de Rothschild Grove with the obelisk. 30 steps to the library and the last three steps are three levels in the library. Very symbolic. 30, de 30 degrees and the last three degrees being the, the adept degrees. And then you have symbology, male-female symbology going on. This looks like trampling the cross. There's a courtyard where the cross is they would not allow the funding of this building, the Rothschild, which is the uh, Jewish banking family, uh, unless they were the architects, uh, they used their architects. So I've given up on becoming a famous architect <laughs> because you got to be playing the game just like in any industry, you got to play the game. Um, and if you want to sell your so if you think you're getting your riches from this world, you're not. It's all going to be. It's for for vanity. Um, so here's Rothschild Boulevard, a very prominent boulevard in Tel Aviv. And we're going to get into Zionism and the Rothschilds at the end of this section. That is the key part. Uh, two buildings here, Yakin and Boaz, or the two pillars of Freemasonry. They are not Yakin and Boaz. They're the uh, pillars of Hercules, uh, Yakin and Boaz. Here are the Rockefellers showing you that. I don't know if you anybody knows about 9-11, but I... 9-11 was a ridiculous um, uh, notion that two buildings, uh, as an architect, buildings are de designed as a diaphragm. Uh, any dem uh, demol when you demolish a building, you have to take out every column in sequence, boom, 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 in order for a building to go down. So these buildings, we're supposed to believe that buildings go down symmetrically at close to free fall speed. Uh, this is physics doesn't even allow for high school physics doesn't allow for that so you can look at for yourself uh, in plain sight you can see the explosive demolition there's a concrete and steel core of the building where the elevator shafts and everything are in you see the pulverization this is literally to dust uh, if you see demolitions go wrong the building goes clump and then it falls over and maybe stays or just falls up but the building for the most part stays intact you see the uh, the uh, explosives going up and out. You see that going up and out. Look at these going up into the sky. And then this is a building that's been hit by a missile. You can see the effect of a, of a missile hitting and the column still remaining and the building still standing. These are classic squibs here, which are demolition. Look at this squib way at the bottom. So they're taking things out. This was an explosive demolition as opposed to a, an implosive demolition where things come in on itself, which was Building 7. So here's Building 7 right here, World Trade Center 7. And you can see nothing's happening to that. It wasn't hit by anything. Um, you can see here uh, smoke rising from the base of the building. There were reports of explosions happening all over the place. So they're taking out foundational uh, structures. A uh, 47 story Solomon Brothers building close to the World Trade Center has also collapsed. So they reported the collapse of World Trade Center 7 and it's still up. So they reported it before it happened. Here's World Trade Center 7 collapsed into its own footprint and there's the relationship of building 7 to the two World Trade Centers. And you see World Trade Center 5 and 6. Not really that damage. You know, they got parts of it done. That's how buildings behave because all the columns are not taken out. So portions of the building will be damaged. Here's World Trade Center 7 falling at free fall speed. He uses the term, the smartest thing to do is pull it. That is a demolition term. To pull a building means to take it down by explosive that's used in the demolition world. Uh, here's the Pentagon. This is the only photo we've ever gotten of anything ever hitting the Pentagon. This is a building that has multiple cameras around this building. In addition to that, if anything comes near 
for that building, there's anti-aircraft batteries that will come up from the ground and shoot anything down coming toward it, especially a slow-moving, supposedly slow-moving cruise missile or a uh, an airplane. <coughs> ground uh, zero, uh, one year after the event, here's the eye symbolism. So there was a commemoration ritual being held there. This was supposedly up for 33 or 34 days. I still can't get it uh, right, but 33, another number. Um, here is the resulting building, the two buildings going down and memorializing that. And then the third building was very controversial. Daniel Liebeskin had an initial design, and then uh, SOM took it over, a very prominent architectural firm. And then the resulting design is triangle up, triangle down, as above, so below. Anybody see the movie Oblivion lately? Yeah. Oblivion? Oblivion, in this movie, the they showed you showing this building. Look through here, he says, and I will show you the future. Look through there. They're showing you this building as above, so below. The joining of heaven and earth. In addition to that, you understand that because that was a marriage proposal happening. The occult just, Satan just takes over what God has already planned. And he uses it for his own occult uh, uh, nature. So that was a marriage ceremony, the male and female, and showing you the building. A very key scene in that movie, if you understand that um, and watch that. Okay. Um, so here's the time when George W. Bush got the, the, the notion that oh, uh, we're under attack. The second plane hit the building, and he's like, remember this? He's like, uh, what should I do? Uh, those are 905. There happened to be – now, this is where you guys are going to think I'm crazy because I believe 911 was a ritual uh, event. The pet goat is what they were – he was reading. The pet goat. Now, Masonry and the pet goat, he's the secret society member, Skull and Bones. Here's the book, kind of dragons and kind of magic. That pet goat is called here, uh, is uh, the story here. It's about a goat that wreaks havoc and becomes a hero in the end. You can read about the pet goat, what he was reading. In addition to that, uh, they recited the pet goat during the uh, school recital, which was the uh, name of the uh, story. And then, and you can get that on the internet. Now, on the internet, they have it wrong here because uh, the actual words that were recited, if you hear the words phonetically, kite, kit, or hit, steel, as in steel building, playing sounds like, if, if you were to close your eyes, playing sounds like plane, uh, must. So, plane must hit steel, or kite, plane must hit steel. Just some weird things going on, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you can believe what you want to believe. Here's America. This is another famous image of him with America upside down, all right? I believe all this stuff is planned. Like, this is planned for him to think. Now, to uh, convince you some more. And you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to wonder exactly what President George W. Bush knew about the attack and when he knew it. According to the official White House version, it was at this moment in a Florida classroom that Bush learned the second plane had hit the World Trade Center and that the U.S. was under attack. But here's what George Bush himself said almost three months later when asked about September 11. I was sitting outside. Uh, the, the the classroom waiting to go in, and I saw an airplane hit the tower. Of a, of a TV, you know, the TV was obviously on, and I I used to fly myself, and I said, well, "There's one terrible pilot," and uh, I said it must have been a horrible accident. But I was whisked off there, and didn't have much time to think about. It. Now wait a minute. George Bush was told about the second plane while he was inside the classroom. So you just heard him describe seeing the first plane crash on television that day. But that's impossible. No one saw the first plane crash on TV on September the 11th because the videotape of it didn't surface until the next day. So how could George Bush have seen what he said he's... Okay, so then, uh, so he's describing... I'm going to tell you a strange thing. I think all of us have a sense if we imagine the kind of world we would face if the people who bombed the mess hall in Mosul or the people who did the bombing in Spain, or the people who attacked the United States in New York, 
shut down the plane over Pennsylvania and attacked the Pentagon. Shut down the plane over Pennsylvania. Was there a plane shut down ever over Pennsylvania that we heard about? The only one that was there was Flight 993. They made a movie about the heroes on Flight 93. He just described a plane being shot down over Pennsylvania. That's a demolition. You cannot rig a building up in, uh, what, five hours to go down like that. It takes weeks for people to rig buildings up like that. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, was talking of further collapses around the... Behind me has been completely sealed off and it worked as that was done by the Mayor Rudy Chirlian for collapse of the twin. Very much a city still in chaos. So 47-story Solomon Brothers building, that's World Trade Center 7, uh, to the World Trade Center has also collapsed. There's the building right there. Still up. They reported it before it happened. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. He uh, made a lot of money off this, had a double uh, uh, insurance policy on this building. If you see the top of, the, of this, you'll see that goes first. There's some fires going on here. No building has ever collapsed due to fire, uh, and especially not a catastrophic collapse like this. And so you see the penthouse right here building. You see that go first. It's that we watch the building collapse. It's that we watch the building collapse. It's that we watch the building collapse. Taken down by demolition. Okay, uh, resulting 9-11, uh, everybody heard of shock and awe? Remember shock and awe? Are we glorifying war by naming our operation shock and awe? Here it is. Oh, 72 or 75% approval rating for George W. Bush. War, war, war. War is the biggest money maker on the planet. They've been funding both sides of war. We'll see a little bit of that. And then uh, here are soldiers. Poppy uh, guarding poppy fields or walking through. You see the uh, Afghanistan opium survey in 2008, 2001, opium production in Afghanistan. You see it steadily rising. Is there a war on drugs? Brother of Afghan leader said to be paid by the CIA. So Afghan leader said paid by CIA. Uh, CIA. So we got uh, um, uh, Karzai who was also um, He's an oil guy with George W. Bush. Anyway, MI6 building in the UK. Uh, you see the owl here, two eyes, uh, the crest over the eye. Here's the body and the two legs down here. And if you don't, you're not convinced that that's an owl, they just put up these buildings here. Those are owls in plain sight. So that's right across from the MI6 building. So. Uh, Kazakhstan, a Masonic capital of uh, Kazakhstan, Astana. They have a sunroom where all the religions will come together and mingle. Interfaith dialogue uh, is what uh, the name of the game is nowadays. Ecumenism is what's going on in our churches even today. Now, and you see Masonic uh, pyramids with the colors, elemental colors. CAA building, uh, Creative Artist Agency. Uh, all your major actors are uh, are uh, represented by an agency, CAA being the, one of the biggest. And this is Century Towers in um, Century City. And you see the uh, pyramid with the eye there. Uh, I'm going to go through this quickly. Denver Airport has this plaque and the New World Airport Commission, Denver Airport, along with these apocalyptic murals. They are bringing, leading you into the one world government system, which will encompass the planet. That's the imagery of that. Gargoyles in the airport as well. Uh, Bank of America headquarters, and these three murals here. Masonic imagery here with the man, uh, the boy standing on the square. It's called the square. And they're saying, oh, what's going on here with the black sun and the pyramid and the woman? And then here's the next image, hazmat, net, kind of entrapping man. Here's 
crematoriums like Auschwitz and Nazi Germany going on? Are we headed in that direction? Well, the tribulation, if you read the book of Revelation, pretty um, heavy stuff. I don't want to be here. Then we have uh, architecture. I'm not going to go to the architecture other than here's uh, too much about that. There's the uh, uh, IMP, Illuminati Pyramid, uh, the Louvre, and of course it has a reflective reflecting pool in, uh, in the Louvre in Paris. Uh, federal building, uh, IRS building, and the Illuminati black and white stripes, Masonic as well. Um, Bertram Gridhue is the designer of Honolulu Hale. That's why I said I'm not going to be a famous architect. You've got to be in the club, basically. Here's the Masonic checkerboard sphinxes at the uh, Los Angeles Library. Semiramis is none other than uh, the Statue of Liberty. Is Juno. Is Europa. Look at the, even the, the, the similarity between the, um, the facial structures of, of all of that. So different gods, different names. Statue of Liberty is Semiramis. Here is Semiramis, the wife of Nimrod, the son Tammuz, which they were weeping for underneath the temple, uh, uh, the true temple, Ezekiel 8. Here's Bartoli, the Freemason. Uh, uh, this was the gift of the French Freemasons to the Americans. And then you have the sun gods with the rays. Oh, I'm not going to go into Venus there. All of these gods are represented by the original god, goddess. Uh, and then you have um, uh, Venus Columba, where we get the word, the term Columbia, District of Columbia. Uh, Venus Columba, the god, uh, the Roman version. Uh, Columbia sitting on the uh, stepped pyramid. This is one of the original logos of uh, Columbia Pictures. Uh, kind of an interesting thing here. I saw a movie uh, that had was done by Columbia. This hand looks out of place. It looks more masculine than it is feminine. And if you actually get a better image of this, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. And it actually clo um, goes as a close up. If you see one of these movies, it zooms in to the hand and fades out. I'm gonna tell you, I don't put it past these guys to put the androgyny in plain sight like that, kind of subtly in plain sight. Columbia calls, uh, there's calling for war, and Semiramis uh, in Hollywood appropriately with the tiara showing the sun rays. And Lucifero, the, the male version here with the Lucifer Luciferian torch, I told you that this is the, the uh, torch of enlightenment, Prometheus, and that is the uh, Olympic ritual, Gaga with her sun rays, as well as Marilyn uh, Manson, and then you have uh, Colossus of Rhodes is the Statue of Liberty, the male version of Statue of Liberty, and turning uh, Mary into the Queen of Heaven or and the goddess as well. So here, this is not Mary. This is Masonic, the goddess, uh, Masonic goddess. And though that torch of enlightenment, and you can see here used in uh, on the back of the diamond in, in uh, uh, educational logos. The hidden hand, the sign of the master of the second veil. The hidden hand, the most famous hidden hand is Napoleon. You see the Freemasons here with their aprons doing the hidden hand. And you see Napoleon doing the hidden hand. So Mason, uh, his predecessor was uh, King Louis uh, the 16th. And the hidden hand, Robespierre, the French Revolution, the hidden hand, both sides, all the revolutions were was a changing of the system of government, all um, allegiance. They had allegiance, you see, here to Rome. If you're not playing the, the role and you, they, we need a change of guards, they're going to take you out uh, by any means. And uh, Freemasonry was a big part of the French Revolution and the start of that. Here is uh, Washington, George Washington himself, hidden hand. A lot of people don't know that he did that as well. So there's Washington. There is this guy with kind of like the Shaka hidden hand version. <laughs> You'll see that a little bit later. And then here is the uh, signing of the declaration, I believe that is. So uh, not just military men either. And this is the West showing the hidden hand here. Here's uh, Lincoln. Lincoln showing it here. And Lincoln's assassin booth. 
Uh, here's some military men here. Uh, I don't know why I stuck that in there. I think. Oh, uh, he was a Confederate general. Was Albert Pike? <clears throat> Hidden hands. Uh, general Booth of the Salvation Army. I got seven Im separate images of him doing the Masonic hand. This is works based Salvation Army, works based system. Works don't save you. Works justify your faith, but works do not save you. That is the gospel. Um, uh, so works based systems are not uh, uh, are not of God, uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't do works. Of course we do. Uh, so we, well, more four-time uh, term uh, prime minister of Great Britain. Uh, you, I don't know whether or not he's doing the allegiance or hidden hand, probably both. Here's um, uh, James Dean and his friend. And this is uh, Paul Ryan. Kind of strange image there. So that was West. Now I'll look at East. You think uh, they're not having caviar and... Vodka in the back room while the world is uh, in the dialectic. Communism for 40 years plus years was the Cold War, and that was the enemy. Uh, and now the new enemy is the war on terror. So always have to have an opposing force going on, and communism was that force. Karl Marx was hired by the New York Times to create the Communist Manifesto. Uh, and then Trotsky here. Uh, I think he's the head of the Gestapo, but here's Lenin, hidden hand. Stalin, 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 here. Does that make sense? The brothers have always been brothers, and they've been playing humanity. Freemasonry unmasked as the secret power behind communism. Mazzini, the uh, head of the Thug Mafia. Here's Skull and Bones member doing the hidden hand. Yale, that's George the Bushes were involved with that. I believe this is Mozart. Nietzsche, the psychologist, God is dead, is his famous saying. Bartoli from the Statue of Liberty. Uh, poets, Ruskin, uh, leader of Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, one of the Eastern Bloc countries. Uh, I don't know if this is West, maybe I need to change that. Here's Simon Bolivar, South America. Uh, now, here's an example. Mubarak, he just got taken out in, in uh, Egypt. Uh, I believe they, like the mafia, they give you a country. You can have it for 40 years, decades. You're the man until they want you out. If you're not going to go quietly, they'll take you out by force. And they've taken him out by force. He's pleading for his life now uh, in, in the system. So allegiance for a while and take you out. And so here's the hidden hand that Jay Z's doing. River Phoenix and his hidden hand, as well as the Illuminati I, Morrissey, the Smiths. Oh man. Here's the Beatles. Paul McCartney, hidden hand. Morris Day. Showing you the man with the hidden hand. Johnny Depp. And there's that Shaka hidden hand with the Robert De Niro. On a set of Taxi, Kanye West. Here's a Masonic single pillar. You saw that with the uh, Washington. Here's another hidden hand. Hidden hands. He doesn't even have a coat. He's hiding his hand under his, his arm. Handshakes. I'm not going to say all of these are, but you see two Freemasons doing the shake here. It's the knuckle on the uh, uh, the the thumb pressed onto the knuckle. Area two Freemasons again. This is uh, who is that again? That Prince, no, it's not Charles. It's uh, the British um, uh, Prince uh, Philip. Philip is that Philip? Okay. All right. Anyway, here's a British. Um, this is a Masonic shake between father and son. It's on the internet. You can look that up. Uh, clearly a Masonic shake. Now Ron Paul. You guys want to be a constitutionalist? <laughs> I believe they own the opposition, therefore they own Ron Paul, uh, wife and daughter, uh, both affiliated with Eastern Star. Um, and for him not to be, uh, he has does have uh, uh, fraternity roots and uh, 
Uh, I can't pinpoint it there, but kind of interesting. But I believe that they, uh, if you have a voice, like i.e., if you have, if you're allowed to have a mic, you're you're playing the game already. And I believe his role is to take a, cons a census of the opposition. So not very many people support it, but he's getting a lot of support from the younger crowd and the constitutional guy. But watch out who they are. Uh, it's always their men, whether Democrat, Republican, two wings of the same beast uh, uh, happening. I don't vote anymore. You can vote if you like. I'm not telling you not to vote or, or whatever. You can vote if you like, but I'm, if, you, if George W. Bush is a skull and bones member and John Kerry is a skull and bones, their man always their man always gets there. So you want to go into values voting, which Christians do. We'll get into that a little bit later, Jerry Falwell. But anyway, here's the Pope's clearly Masonic shake there. That is clearly Masonic shake. Pope uh, Paul. Uh, interesting shakes going on here. Okay, that's very deliberate. So. Uh, Kind of interesting whether or not that's a shake or not, but uh, you can see that Gaddafi was uh, uh, working with the CIA. So I, like I said, I do believe they they go, um, they're allowed to to uh, rule for the time being. They don't want to go out uh, slowly, which most of them don't. Uh, they will uh, take you out forcefully. To the Masons of Pete, peace, Yitzhak Rabin, Israel. King Hussein, Jordan, Bill Clinton. Right there in plain sight. This was an ad in uh, the Haaretz or one of the Israeli newspapers. Uh, most of the, you saw Buzz Aldrin, uh, one of the astronauts, uh, Freemason. Uh, somebody told me all the astronauts are Freemasons. And uh, you can see clearly the shake there, Buzz Aldrin as well. So I'm not saying you saw you know, his Masonic ring, supposedly. And so we'll just keep going. Kind of an interesting handshake there. There is Bono. This is a Masonic shake between Gaga and uh, Oprah. You can find that on the internet as well. Uh, French Revolution stuff. The, uh, while the general public has been led to believe that communism is a movement of the workers' Soviet to destroy capitalism, pawns in the game proves that both British and American intelligence officers obtained authentic documentary evidence, evidence which proved that internationalist Capitalists operating through their international banking houses had financed both sides of every war and revolution fought since 1776, financing both sides of war. Here is a um, uh, memorial for the Battle of Britain and Brussels. I wonder who they fought for. That's on the back of your dollar bill. French Revolution imagery. Here is the independence. You see all the occult imagery, the hat of Mithra, uh, the god, uh, Persian god of war. There's the square and Bob. And then you have uh, the obelisk, the Roman fasces. Look at all the imagery going on in the revolution, French Revolution. Uh, moving on to uh, the American Revolution, the Green Dragon Tavern, a planning site for the Boston Tea Party. Paul Revere was a Freemason, therefore they fomented the revolution. Here is the uh, uh, them dressing up and throwing a tea into the uh, to the Boston uh, uh, the waters there. Green Dragon Tavern, uh, a planning site, and here is a Boston Tea Party showing Sam Adams uh, fomenting war, uh, but war for who was it against the opposition? Look at the British East India Company trading flag. That's Britain. Look at the resulting American flag being the same here. And of course, the uh, Union Jack of the British Empire. That's the British East India Company flag. Why in the world? Betsy Ross, is, did she design the flag? Uh, anyway, kind of interesting. You have the British East India Trading Company flag. Uh, Knights Templar, uh, there's the cross or the red cross of the Knights Templar. You see red cross. Uh, as well as a uh, supposed to be a charitable organization, Americans would be fighting under the private flag of the International Mercantile Corporation, controlled by Jesuits. You remember all the money from the Roman Empire going on through the Holy Roman Empire, while well, Jesuits now coming all the way through to the American Revolution. After 20 years of constant and most difficult research, I come fearlessly. To 
uh, today before the American people to say and prove that the President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by the priests and the Jesuits of Rome. So he's not playing the game. He was printing silverbacks uh, during the war, taken out. Uh, so whether or not he was doing the hidden hand and part of a Masonic Lodge, which he was, uh, if you're not playing the game, you're taken out. Uh, Washington in the lap of Rome. I refer, he said, to the flag of the East India Company raising on uh, January 2nd, 1776, George Washington, American Revolution and Independence, um, raising the British East India Company flag under that flag. Go figure. We're supposed to be fighting against an enemy, not for the enemy. So the revolution, all it is, is a simply a changing and the foundation or founding of a new nation uh, with the same players behind it. So Ben Franklin had a place in London. So he used to go back and forth. Uh, friends. Um, so here we are, uh, the uh, remnants of the British East India Trading Company flag. This is the Hawaiian flag. Uh, and the British East India Company Trading Company was involved in the slave trade. Uh, your founding fathers were slave owners. As an architect, this is the most evil drawing I could ever imagine making. Designing for, these are all supposed to be people here. Designing a ship to hold as many people this way as possible. And the evil that it is, unspeakable. Uh, Constitutions of the Freemasons, you'll find that the, the Masonic Constitution is the same, uh, has the same checks and balances and uh, um, uh, things as the U.S. Constitution does. 1798 edition, proofs of a conspiracy. That letter that George Washington wrote about knowing about the Illuminati is about this time, and therefore somebody had probably written him and told him, are you aware of the Illuminati? So proofs of conspiracy against religions and governments of Europe um, by the Freemasons and the Illuminati. I'll get a better image of this uh, so you can see it but uh, uh, in the next version. The Roman fasces in America and in Nazi Germany. So the use of Roman symbolism there. And then you have uh, three Freemasons, Churchill, FDR, and Stalin. Uh, we saw Winston Churchill installed as a Druid in 1908. There he is with the Druid priests. And there he is. Now, uh, example of, of the lesson of 9-11, what happens after uh, this is Honolulu Advertiser, Cruz, who bluntly warned nation is ready for battle. One week before uh, Pearl Harbor, Hilo Tribune, Japan may strike over the weekend. Were, was America ready? There were planes lined up in single file. Ammunition was still in the bunkers. Everybody was going Sunday, having a gay old time, and nobody was ready. Uh, but the news had it. And what happened after that? The nation was fomented into uh, war. And there's a story of ships being held prior to uh, 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 Pearl Harbor. So anyway, ships lined up in a row, uh, not ready for anything. So anyway, we got uh, Parliament building in Japan. You see the checkerboards. Whether or not this is a government building, I don't know. Uh, my wife did the research here. I don't know if it's a, a prime minister's building or not, but a government building nonetheless. Owls. 333 meters high is Tokyo Tower. Uh, Democratic Party, or one of the parties, showing you the eye symbolism. And uh, another variant of the eye, this is this uh, 1,000 yen bill. Uh, the 10,000 yen bill has an eye, and if you look the, at the eye of the phoenix, so there's a phoenix on the other side of the bill. This happens to be Mount Fuji and the eye at the apex of Mount Fuji. So you saw Mao with the Freemason. Here's the first Chinese Masonic Lodge uh, at about the time of the, uh, after the uh, uh, Chinese Revolution. And then you have uh, the resulting uh, uh, death. Uh, he's the most ever uh, is atheistic communism as far as death. So you think uh, killing in the name of God is, is uh, it, um, atheism kills, has killed more at that as well. Uh, and the devil taking him up to a high mountain showed him unto uh, showed him showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of, moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, and 
uh, all shall be thine. Uh, Jesus didn't say um, these are not yours. Right now, this is Satan's dominion. So he is the prince of the powers of the earth. These are his kingdoms. Currently, Jesus is going to take it all back. Um, he gave Adam dominion over everything. Satan usurped it. Uh, and then Noah, uh, uh, when Noah uh, came around, uh, he did not give Noah dominion. He said, uh, be fruitful and multiply. So the dominion wasn't, uh, it was Satan, still is Satan's right now. Jesus is going to come back. Now,